Hello, my name is Jörg and welcome to CoachRed.net. In this video, we will customize the bottom navigation bar, where it appears on which pages, the color, the font, the icon, everything. To have the space, I get rid of the standard navigation. To do so, I go onto the navigation tab, tap on enabled under navigation menu and set enable to know. Back on the page, I drag in two elements. One is scroll view to contain the main contents of the page and a row to act as the navigation bar. Into this cell one of the row, I drag an image to contain my custom icon and a paragraph to contain the tab name. The dimensions of the image component I set to 35 by 35 to contain the icon. The tab name should be closer to the icon, so I take out the bottom margin. The icon can really be any image file, so I just take a PNG file from my website. Good, now to the tab name. I change the content to the word one, and under style and typography, the font and the size. The elements should be in the middle of the cell, so I change the layout to center. The navbar should have a distinct color. So I go into the row and set the background to a nice yellow. Now a couple of steps follow to push the navbar all the way to the bottom. Please follow them precisely. First select the scroll view, then go into dimension and position and scroll down to show advanced options. Here the flex grow and the flex shrink both need to be one. Step one is done. Now select the page by clicking into the white space below the yellow bar. Go into style, advanced properties and here click disable, scroll and stretch to the viewpoint height. And bingo, the navbar is where it should be. Save it and you also see it in the preview. But the padding of the page doesn't allow our navbar to go all the way to the edges of the screen. To remedy, I set the padding of the screen to all zeros. It's starting to look like a navbar. Next, I want to check it with contents on the screen. So I drag a paragraph element into my scroll view and add a long text to it. Checking it in the preview app, the navbar stays where it should and the scrolling works perfectly. Just the padding of the page is missing. The text is too far to the edges of the screen. To fix that, I drag a container into the scroll view and drag the paragraph into that container. Next, I'm setting the margins of the container inside the scroll view to the original settings of the page. As all the contents of the page is in that container, I have the original settings. Checking it in the preview app, it looks how it should. And notice the scroll bar is all the way to the right. Perfect. Moving on to the nav bar, the text of a second page could be blocked by the black bar. I can change this by adjusting the height of the row. I set it to 80, see how that works. Saving it and looking at the preview, it looks about right. I keep it for now. The look of the nav bar and the contents is good. Time to concentrate on the inner workings of the nav bar. First, I want to be aware which page I'm on. So I go into variables, set an app variable called current page. It's a text. The initial value is one. To indicate which page I'm on, I want to lighten the background of the cell of the current page. Clicking on the symbol in front of the word background color, I get the option to define a formula. Now I get an added icon in the value of the background color. The current definition of the color will come in handy later, so I select it and copy it. I use the if formula to test if the current page equals one. In the true value, I paste what I copied before. The first three values of the RGBA basically say that it's a white 
and the force, the zero, says that the white isn't shown. I set the fourth value to 0.75 to let the yellow shine through the white. The false value should be the original, so I just paste it in. Saving both the formula and the app, I see how it looks in the preview. Very nice. Next is the logic of the cell, so I click on Add Logic to Cell 1 at the bottom of the screen. AppGyver animates a new page with a slide in. I don't want this if I'm already on page one. To avoid it, I define a formula in an if condition. The is equal gives me the desired true or false. The first value is the app variable current page and the second value is the string one. Only if the if condition delivers false, I want to change to the next page. The flow function open page puts the current page on the navigation stack. I don't want this for the tab bar navigation. So I go into the flow function market and download the replace page. Okay, it's already installed on my account. Uh, if you don't have it, just install it. I drag in the replace page flow function and connect it to the bottom exit of the if condition. I want to go to page one, so the properties page is already configured correctly. Next, I set the app variable current page to one. The flow functions are finished. I want to have three pages, so I duplicate the cell three times and delete the fourth since I don't need that anymore. Next is the configuration of the navbar. First, I set the tab name of the second page to two. The background of the cell should only be the lighter color if the app variable current page is 2. So I configure the background formula for this cell. The current page should be compared to the string 2. The same goes for the if condition in the flow function. The is equal should also be compared to the string 2. Next is the navigation. Now I want to go to page two. And lastly, I set the assigned value of the current page to two as well. In the same way, I configure page three. You already know how it goes, so I speed up the video a little bit. The navbar is configured and I want to make a component out of it to use it on the other pages. So first I rename it from row one to navbar and use the square icon right below to create a view component out of it. I go to page two to configure it like our page one. First I drag in the scroll view and a container inside to set the right margins. In the component market under the tab by me, I find my navbar and drag it in as well. All the components are on the page. Now I make the scroll view push the navbar all the way to the bottom. So I select it, go into style, go into dimension and position under advanced settings and set the flex grow and the flex shrink to one. Next is the page layout. I select the page, go into advanced properties and disable scroll and stretch the viewpoint to the height. Now the paddings. For the page, they should be all zero to make the elements stretch all the way to the edge. The container inside the scroll view gets the padding as margin because we want the container to push away from the edges. Page two is fine. Now off to page three, I will do the same thing and speed up the video. Great, let's see what we got in the preview app. So first is our page one. Then when we press two, you see in the animation that we switched over to page two. If we press two again, you see nothing happens. The slide-in information comes going to page three and then to the detail page. 
On the detail page, we see that there is no navbar at the bottom, which is quite common for detail pages. You exit with the chevron on the top header bar. Or, for example, you place a save button on the detail page. The navbar is all custom. We have custom icons, custom fonts, size, color, behavior. Everything is uh, just exactly how we would like it to be. In the next video, we will do the same with the header. So see you there.